Ammo Squared helps you stay stocked up on your ammunition. Ammo is delivered on demand or automatically when you need it and stored for free when you don't. It's a budget-friendly way to build a stockpile of ammo. It's customizable to your budget. You can buy as little as a few dollars a month or let it grow over time or buy a bunch all at once so you have it when you need it. It is truly automated. Set it and forget it. Ammo purchasing. Pick your caliber, set your budget, select a shipping address, and that's it. Ammo Square is there to help smooth out the rough spots of ammunition availability, like an ammo 401k or ammo savings account. Check them out at AmmoSquared.com. Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. Eight years ago, I made a video called Five Firearms. I regret selling. And I had a viewer say, you should update this. It's been eight years. I'm sure you've sold some that you regret. And I thought about it and said, yeah, I most certainly did. I sold some that I wish I did not sell. So that's what this video is about. Five firearms I regret selling. So let's get to it. The first handgun I really regret selling is the HK P30. It's a V3 variant three double action, single action in it was chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. And I'm still a fan of 40. And why I got rid of this, I have no idea. It has a 3.85 inch barrel, ambi controls, 13 round magazines. I love the position of the decocker, the luminescent sights. It shot like a dream. And it's one of those handguns that shoots so well that you say, I'll never get rid of this. And then when something else came up, I found a buyer. And I decided to sell it. And I really regret it because I miss that handgun. I miss it a lot. And now I only have 140 Smith & Wesson, which is not good. And I really wish I had the P30 because that thing really handled the recoil of the 40 and was just such an amazing handgun. Why in the world did I do that? I have owned the Mossberg 590S. It's a little bit of a shorter shockwave and it has performed great. But when I got my hands on the 590M, shockwave and the m stands for magazine it's a magazine fed shockwave that i loved it has 15 inch barrel and a 10 round double stack magazine that it ships with but they also offer a 20 round magazine that is heavy you know but how often do you have 20 rounds in a little short firearm in 12 gauge not too often and mossberg has has it with the 590 m and what did i do I sold it. Why did I sell it? Well, there was something at the time that I wanted more, and now I realize it wasn't a great sale, and I wish I didn't do it. But the 590M was an amazing 12 gauge. I was ready to say shotgun. It's not a shotgun. But with the 20 rounds that not only is high capacity, but it fired incredibly well, I really do miss it. I had the Glock 21 and 45 ACP, but deep in my heart, I wanted a Glock 41. Then they came out with the MOS version. It's only available with a Gen 4, but modular optic system. I said, that's the one I'm going to get, and that's the one I'm going to keep. I wanted that more than the Glock 21 all along, and then I, I got it, and I put a Swamp Fox Kraken on there, dialed that thing in, and it was great. And the long slide, which is a 5.3 inch barrel, holds 13 round magazines, but what I was going to say is that the long slide decreases the recoil incredibly well. The accuracy with the longer barrel is great, sort of mimics a 1911. I have to be careful here because 1911s and 45 is like the best, but the 41 was as close as you get, could get to a 1911 in terms of the size and the recoil impulse and what it offered and even with the double stack 13 round mags it just worked it was great and what did i do stupidly i got rid of it and really wish i did can you believe i got rid of the canic tp9 sf elite i was so excited to get that gun i picked it up used locally and i was happy to have it shot like a dream love the trigger the canic triggers are so so nice they do such a nice job but it, it was an accurate shooter. It fed, fired, and ejected everything just fine. But then I said I want an optic-ready one. Well, they make a lot of optic-ready handguns now, but the price on those skyrocketed, so the budget canics are still kind of hard to find these days. However, the optic-ready one is really what I wanted, and then I sat back and thought to myself, I have two canics already that are optic-ready, and I never put optics on them. You just can't put them on every handgun. But I was excited to do that. 
I never did. Of course, I found something else that I just had to have at the time. And the Canik TP9 SF Elite went bye-bye. I miss it, but I think that I can get it replaced rather quickly and also get an optic ready one that I could utilize a red dot. CZ does a great job with attention to detail and the sharpest looking coach gun I ever seen is called the sharp tail. I guess sharp is a common thing with this coach gun, but it has Turkish walnut, color case, hard receiver, 20 inch barrel, single trigger, just a gorgeous shotgun. And it's actually a wall hanger. Well, I have certain firearms that are wall hangers and I have the majority are duty you know I want to use them if I need them and I already have a coach gun made by Stoger at just a fraction of the cost the MSRP on the sharp tails $1,200 and I found a buyer and he loves it and I decided to get rid of it it's one of those that you wish you had but you didn't necessarily need and you had an opportunity to sell it and you kind of regret it, and you, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I, I wish I had it in my possession at this time, just because it was so beautiful, performed very well. But there again, it's a coach gun, and they are out there and available at a much lower cost, and I just went in that direction. What do you think of my choices? And I also want to know what you regret selling in the past couple of years, something that you let go and looking back, you really wish you didn't. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.